first, a wave of shootings in this country has revealed something about America, and it's not, by the way, that we need more gun control. Instead, it has revealed that the public cannot rely on its government to keep them safe. We've learned that conclusively. The failures of the Broward County Police during the Parkland, Florida shooting are well known. But last weekend's shooting at a Tennessee Waffle House also exposed a wave of government miscues. Trace Gallagher has more details on that tonight. Hey, Trace. Hi, Tucker. During the high school massacre in Parkland, Florida, Broward County Sheriff's deputies reportedly took cover behind cars and trees, even though one deputy knew where the shooter was. Coral Springs police now say they saw deputies taking shelter while they rushed past them to get inside the school. This report is on top of that surveillance video and dispatch audio that shows Broward County School Resource Deputy Scott Peterson also not entering the school building, despite seeing the shooter in the stairwell. Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel said at the time that he was sick to his stomach that Peterson didn't go inside. But now the rank and file of the Broward Sheriff's Office are taking a no confidence vote on Sheriff Israel. And a big component of the vote is that Sheriff placed the blame on Deputy Peterson instead of waiting for the investigation to be finalized. Sheriff Israel calls the vote a union ploy to get a pay raise. Meantime, prior to the Nashville Waffle House shooting, police had numerous contacts with suspects. Travis Reinking, including days before the attack when Reinking allegedly stole a car and police gave chase, but then called off the pursuit to track the car using GPS. In 2016 and 17, Reinking told police in Illinois and Colorado that music star Taylor Swift was stalking him. He was later arrested by Secret Service for violating White House security. And when the FBI learned that Reinking owned four weapons, including an AR-15 rifle, they had Illinois police revoke his gun card and turn the weapons over to his father. The dad gave the guns back and could now face charges. And finally, seven months, we should note, after the Vegas shooting, some 700 plus hours of video and 2,000 911 calls remain largely unseen and unheard. Tucker. Trace Gallagher with details. Thanks a lot, Trace, as always. We well, remember Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel. He thoroughly discredited himself uh, with his handling of the Parkland shooting. We're at a CNN gun control rally. He attempted to vilify gun owners as a group while simultaneously heaping credit on himself like a megalomaniac. Now, Sheriff Israel is facing a vote of no confidence from his own deputies. Jeff Bell is a deputy sheriff and president of the Broward Sheriff's Office Deputies Association, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Bell, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. So facing a vote of no confidence for what? Why do you have no confidence? Well, there's a series of events that have led up to this vote of no confidence, and it has nothing to do with a contract whatsoever. That is a blatant lie by the sheriff himself. But this is about a series of events over the past couple of years, such as the uh, bad policies of the Promise Program and the Civil Citation Program, that takes all discretion away from deputies to make the arrests that we need to make. It's about the, uh, the, the lack of training facilities, not having our own gun range to properly train for these situations. It's about the distrust between the sheriff's office and the union when the sheriff's office asks for our help to raise property taxes on citizens because they claim to be broke, but yet we're well, only to find out after completing an audit that the sheriff's office returned $100 million back to the county commission alone last year. And then it's the discovery of the misuse of uh, taxpayer money by the Broward Sheriff's Office by providing private entities such as Napa Auto Parts with free gas cards from the sheriff's office where we've identified through public records requests that they, in one year alone, they obtained 6,000 gallons of gasoline from our gas pumps. That is a fleecing of Broward County. And then also on top of it, the disparity of treatment and punishment between the command staff if they were to commit felonies and untruthfulness compared to a deputy is a far great uh, time span of, of what punishment we will get uh, between the rank and file and the command staff. So that what's your, led to this no confidence. Well, that's, a, that's quite a litany. I mean, what you're describing is a combination of incompetence and corruption. Call me cynical, but when you watched Sheriff Israel lay the entire blame for the shooting on <clears throat> middle America, because ordinary law-abiding people have too many guns in his view, did it seem like an effort to distract from his own failures? Absolutely it was. And you can see this pattern of this. Uh, this Sheriff Israel, back in his own Facebook post from uh, February 24th of this, this year, 
He said that there was only one deputy on scene on the school during the entire attack. That's proven to be false. So he can't tell the truth about that event. Then he goes on a town forum and he blames the NRA. Then he blames one deputy, Scott Peterson, for this problem. Then he blames everybody else that he can for this problem. I understand that he can't be responsible for every employee, but at the end of the day, he needs to be accountable for his employees, and he's just not being accountable. And yes, th this is some of the reasons why he needs to be removed from office. Removed from office. And so accountability requires transparency. You have to know what someone's doing in order to evaluate it. And you, you just heard Trace Gallagher say that there are many video and audio tapes that the public still has not seen. Why is that? Well, they don't want to be transparent because it's going to expose that the sheriff knew some uh, information in the past that he contradicted himself in public interviews. And that's going to come back and bite him on that. However, we're going to press forward for more transparency with the sheriff, the same way that he claims to be the most transparent sheriff that's ever been in the sheriff's office. It goes both ways, sheriff, and you need to be transparent. Release those videos so we can know the truth. Now, if this vote of no confidence goes forward and it turns out the way that the membership is voicing their opinion towards us, then we'll take that information to the governor's office and we'll support him with ever, whatever decision he wants to make. But if he chooses to re uh, remain uh, sheriff with Scott Israel, then that means that the governor agrees that Sheriff Israel is an amazing leader, which he's not. And be forewarned that when the next incident happens, if the governor leaves him there, it will be on the hands of Governor Scott, not the employees at the Broward Sheriff's Office. Uh, well, I'm, I'm so glad you're bringing this to our attention. It's a shame, though, we had to wait months to hear it from a, a law enforcement officer and that CNN, which hosted this gun control rally and put Israel at the center of it, never asked a single skeptical question about his behavior. It's frustrating, but I'm glad the truth is coming out, and I'm glad you're telling our viewers about it. Mr. Bell, thank you. Thank you. Kyle Kashev was there that day at Parkland. He's a survivor of the shooting. He's a high school student in Parkland. He says he was recently called in for questioning by school officials for daring to go to a gun range with his dad. Kyle joins us tonight. Um, so, thank Kyle, am, am I, thank you for coming on. Am I misstating that? Did, w tell us what you did that earned you a trip uh, to visit with armed authorities at your school. What was your crime? It wasn't even a trip. It was an interrogation. It was, it was a clear attempt to intimidate me, and they used very, very, very harsh intimidation tactics. I mean, at the end of the day, I went shooting with my dad at a gun range. I mean, I did everything peacefully. Um, and I went shooting with my dad, and I, I did absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, I posted a video of me showing um, my admiration for the Second Amendment and telling people to educate themselves about the Second Amendment because right. we can't trust our government to defend ourselves. So you went to a gun range with your dad, which I think is still legal uh, in this country, and you'd think that yeah. we would encourage this because you learn gun safety and how to handle a gun appropriately. You didn't misuse it. You got called in and interrogated. What questions could they have asked you? What, what would be the interrogation? So I come into the office, okay, and this is, it was all very, very weird. I get sit down, and the school resource officer goes like this. He says, Kyle, you're taking five AP classes. You're such a good student. Why would you do something like this? And I was, I was in shock. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, why would you do something like this? And they came in there with the notion that I had done something wrong by going to a gun range. So I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you tweeted out a video of you at a range. I said, did you see the tweet? He said, no, I didn't see the tweet. I don't, I don't do Twitter. So I'm like, well, then check the tweet. The tweet in itself was a video of me shooting a fire and telling people to educate themselves about the Second Amendment. So we talk back and forth, and then the Broward Sheriff's Officer comes into the room. Um, he comes in the room. He sits, he sits right behind me, very, very, very close. And then the interrogation truly starts. They go, whose gun is it? Who'd you shoot it with? Why'd you shoot it? Who'd you shoot it with? Is it your gun? Is it your dad's gun? When did you go? And at this entire time, I was like, did I do anything wrong? I mean, it's still America. Last time I checked, I can go to a gun range and, sh and shoot it peacefully. And then I said, Why? like, did I do anything wrong? And they said, don't get snappy with me. And then I was like, all right, can I record this? And they said, no. And I mean, Wait, in what? reality, they, they did not allow you to record the conversation. Why? Nope, I explicitly asked, I asked the school resource officer, may I record this? And he said, no. And you told them you were clear that you were with your father. Mm-hmm. And the, they, they were very, they, they tried to somewhat tell me, or to, to intimidate me, to somehow incriminate my father. It was a real push. They came in there 
tr like knowingly uh, saying that I was at fault for doing for exercising my Second Amendment right at a gun range, and it comes down to this. It comes down to this. Why should why should I be interrogated for peacefully going to a gun range? I asked them. I was like, did I do anything wrong? They said, no, you're not a threat. So why are they calling down me? Why are they calling down me? Is this is every single individual going to a gun range going to be called down? What is the end to it? Because it's a clear it's it's, it's a clear road to, to to tyranny. Well, maybe because I have children, I sympathize with your father. He's an adult American citizen, correct? Yeah. I mean, he, he has a right I to mean, take his son where he wants within the bounds of the law without getting second guessed by some school person. I mean, it's pretty. What did absolutely uh, finally and quickly? What did he say about this? My dad has been in shock. He, he doesn't understand how something so so like something so small can turn into something like why why was my son being interrogated? The the school resource office hadn't even called my father about this. They didn't even know I was going to meet him. Yeah. They didn't know this. Yeah, because they they, they don't care about his rights uh, as a parent at all. Kyle, thanks a lot. That's, that's, uh, that's quite a story, and I appreciate your telling it. I mean, Tucker. Okay, thank you. Thanks. We got a Fox News.